Hey Tube, how's it going? Mevlin back here again with another Alchemy Stars video and for this one, Fire Tier List. Finally going to be making my Fire Tier List. So I've been playing Fire for a little bit and I've come to realize that they're kind of different when compared to the other elements. They're kind of weird because they have very... They have two very obvious weaknesses. One is the fact that they don't have a good healer. The only dedicated healer in Fire, uh, in that a, a healer with a healing skill under chain combo is Alice. And I just don't think Alice is a good character in general. There are some niche situations where Alice is active is useful, but I just don't think she's that good. So Fire has a really weak healing and two, Fire is very low mobility. They don't have a good teleport. In fact, I think the only teleport in Fire is going to be and she happens to be a three star. So I'm going to make this tier list with that in mind, knowing that fire is very different from other colors. And yeah, let's go straight to it. Starting off with the three star heroes, we got Chainsaw Rick. Uh, D tier, aside from the side story, I forgot what they're called, but there's a part in the game where you're supposed to use Chainsaw Rick and he's useful there, but you could use him level one in that situation and it's okay. So no reason to be building Chainsaw Rick even uh, in that specific situation. Uh, this guy, I actually forgot his name. I had to go look him up. His name is Sorkin Beck, apparently. Uh, he's a DPS, a uh, three star, instead D tier, any, any three star that is only a DPS character, not very good. He does have some burns, but there are other burns characters in the game so i don't think you should bother with this guy meanwhile the rest of the three stars are actually pretty good peppy peppy is the only teleporter in fire as far as i know uh her teleport is really short though but on the upside it's a zero turn cooldown meaning you could use it every single turn so pretty decent hero uh peppy uh just because uh, she's a three star if she wasn't a three star if she was a four star or a five star she'd definitely go a or s tier but because she's a three star b tier is like the highest i could give her uh meanwhile uh, the tiny one is also a b tier unit if you don't have that many converters in fire you're probably going to be using tiny one her conversion skill is really good it is a prison tile but it's only uh, one tile though, unlike uh, Erdon who does two tiles. Uh, hers is only one tile, but for a three star, she's really good. Just note that she has the lowest stats in the game. Her health and her defense are abysmally low, like crazy, crazy low. So if you have the tiny one in your team, just know that your team is going to be extremely squishy because one of your units have no health whatsoever. So onto the four stars, we got Joni Boom first here. Uh, she's the last unit I debuted. By the way, I'm going to be putting her in C tier. The problem with her is that as a converter, it's too unreliable. It's great when it works, but it rarely works. Most of the time, nothing happens, and uh, that's kind of downside. She does pretty good damage though, and she does have burns in her kit. But the thing is, Fire has two different kinds of damage over time debuffs. Fire has both burns and bleeds. And when comparing the two, I actually prefer bleeds over burns. So that's why I put her in C tier. Meanwhile, Nails uh, is going to be A tier. Like I said, I prefer bleeds over burns and uh, Nails is the king of bleeds. Once you get him decently low, he's going to proc five stacks of bleeds with his active skill and that is 10% of their missing health for two turns. So he does crazy amounts of damage once both uh, the boss and him are gonna be low health. Also, once he goes low health, uh, he he, has, he gets a little bit of defense, so it makes your team slightly tanky. And I want to mention quickly, with Victoria, uh, they do synergize really well together, but I don't think you need both of them. If you have Victoria, you could get away not using Nails, and if you don't have Victoria, you can still use Nails. I think he's still a good hero just by himself because of how much damage he does with his debuffs. Next up, we got Chandra. Chandra is going to be S tier, and the reason why is because she makes your Nitium farming so much more efficient. At least do Nitium 4 farming, it's a lot less uh, investment when compared to Nitium 5, but either way, I feel like everyone must build their Chandra. No one can do what Chandra does for you in the game. And also, she's pretty good outside of uh, Nitium farming. There's some stages in the Spire where she can work, she's okay. Uh, I've showcased this before with uh, my Taki showcase. Chandra kind of did some work there. So I feel like Chandra, because she's a must build and no one else can replace her, she's an S tier in my personal opinion. So Alice, Alice in a vacuum is actually C and D tier. Her skills are just not very good, but because she's the only healer in Fire, I'm going to be putting her in B tier. The only other uh, healer that you can use in Fire is Victoria. And if you don't have Victoria, then you don't really have a choice. You probably need to use Alice to keep yourself alive. And that's the only reason why she's in B tier right now. So for Patty and Patsy, I'm not gonna lie, I haven't tested her out. I read her kit, but I haven't played her in practice, so I don't have a full understanding of you know where she is in the tier list. But from what I know, everyone that tried her out 
have high praises for Patty and Patsy, so I'm gonna put her in B tier for now. I'll eventually try her out once I have enough time and resources uh, to, to test her kit. But it looks like she's a really good damage dealer. If you don't have any of the DPSs in fire, like if you don't have Sinza, you don't have like Charon, you can try Patty and Patsy. She seems to be a really good detonator with her active uh, being a two turn cooldown with really good range and pretty decent modifiers. Meanwhile, she doubles down our chain combo. So this one's an asterisk for now. I'll try it eventually. And then once we do that, we'll move things up and down depending on whether she's good or bad. Okay, Brock. Brock's gonna be a bit of a contention here. I think she's, he's a really good character on paper. The problem is the stages where he shines, those fights were way too easy. So as I was climbing Molten Spire, there were stages where I was like, yeah, Brock could have worked really great here, but I beat it in one go. I beat it on the first try. It was like a really easy fight. And that's kind of why I'm going to put Brock in the C tier. The fights in the Spire that matter, the fights that are like relatively harder than the rest, Brock does nothing there. Either the boss is immune to being pulled, or you don't want to pull the boss like that's that's kind of the problem he's so irrelevant in situations where it matters and where he shines it doesn't matter that he shines there because it was so easy to begin with so onto the five stars we got faust here insta a tier you guys know me i like me a good two turn preemptive converter uh, all of them are going to be a tier for me short cooldown pretty good conversion rate and just a good hero in general so for regina i feel like regina has the same problem with brock in that uh, she doesn't really shine in important situations. The only the only fight in the Spire where I wish I had Regina was floor 65. That's the one where uh, you have to protect a priest, so her knockback could be pretty good there. But in general, I just feel like her, her active is way too long of a cooldown to be an actual DPS character, and uh, there's just better characters in general IMO. For Benny and Kiro, I'm going to be honest here, I have no idea. I haven't tested her out myself and have not seen anyone else play her. But uh, reading her skills, on paper, I feel like she belongs in C tier just because I think Patty and Patsy deals more damage than Benny and Kiro. Just because Patty and Patsy pretty much has Benny and Kiro's active, except Patty and Patsy can do it every turn. At least that's why I read. Uh, if someone has tried... Uh, Benny and Kiro, do let me know in the comments whether or not you like her or like how does she do as a DPS. So Leona is going to be B tier for now. I really do think she has pretty good potential to be A tier. Uh, because of her equipment skill, she has a 75% chance to burn with her basic attack. So she's sort of like Odie. But the problem is that Odie applies poison and she applies burns. And poisons are just so much more better than burns. That's kind of why I'm going to play it safe here. I'll be putting her in B tier for now. Uh, she is the character I'm going to be testing out next. And I'll let you guys know whether she belongs in A tier after I tested it out. So for Taki, Taki's actually going to be C tier for me. The reason why he's not even B tier is because if you're missing some characters, like if you're missing a converter, I don't think he's that good of a converter, just use tiny one instead. And like if you're missing a damage dealer, I don't even think he's a good damage dealer, just use Patty and Patsy instead. So he doesn't even fill that role. If you're missing gaps in your team, there are other heroes that you could use and they're actually a lot cheaper. That's kind of why he's going to be C tier. There are some fights where he's pretty good, but for the most part, I really don't advise building him, to be honest. Sven. Sven is Hydrad, but in fire form. Similar to Hydrad, I'm going to put him in A tier. A really good support unit. If you play Sven, you're probably going to be building your entire team around Sven. Uh, building your team around his doubling down on your chain combos, which is really, really strong for a OTK build. But he's not a must build though. You could get away building a fire team without Sven, but he's still a pretty good hero in general. For Maggie, it's going to be A tier, a really good hero. Her active skill is such a game changer. She changes so many tiles to red. But like the rest of the Maggies, uh, the problem is just the fact that she has a really long cooldown on her active skill. It does change a little bit once you bring her to max breakthrough. Uh, it becomes a four turn cooldown with preemptive, which is pretty neat. But for the most part, this is a more generalized tier list. So I'm going to put her in A tier because I'm going to assume that you don't have max breakthrough for her. Barbara, Barbara has the same problem with Regina and Brock in that uh, her kit is not usable in a lot of the harder fights in the Spire. Most bosses are going to be immune to stun and that's kind of the reason why you're going to be in Barbara. You want it for her stun ability and her active skill, but like I said, it doesn't work on bosses, which is pretty sad. 
On to the first 6 star of the tier list, we have Victoria, uh, she's going to be an S tier hero and the reason why she's a must build is because she's going to be replacing your crappy Alice. Alice is just a bad character that any excuse you have to replace her, you're going to be taking it and Victoria is probably the only one that can replace her. Uh, she's not a true healer though in that she doesn't have healing on her chain combos. But with her active skill, it's usually enough healing for you to beat the boss before the boss kills you. And especially with Nails on the team, uh, it's going to be increasing her healing just a little bit. And on top of that, she does crazy amounts of damage with her active skill and her chain combo. So really, really good character. Uh, build this character if you have her. So onto Caron. Caron is going to be an S tier for me. He's just a really good damage dealer in general. Uh, being able to do diagonal basic attacks with 10% defense ignoring damage on those basic attacks and on top of that he can reset non-red tiles with his active skill and being able to like push and pull with it as well he's just got a lot on his kit he's sort of similar to hero in that they're both have really good basic attack damage and also they have some conversion in their kit and since hero is s tier he's also s tier pretty good stats as well just an all-around decent hero to begin with so for Ariel, you guys know that I do use Ariel a lot and she is part of my main team, but I do consider her an A tier unit only for a couple of reasons. First off, I don't think Burns is that good when compared to Bleeds and Poisons. Uh, Burns become the inferior damage over time debuff. And secondly, uh, her, her conversion kit is so RNG on a such a long cooldown that most of the time she doesn't do anything and it becomes really disappointing when you use her skill and there's nothing you could use from her conversions. And lastly, uh, with her support ability, she does increase the damage of your team with her equipment skill, but you're going to be needing a lot of burn. So she needs some other burn units for it to truly shine. And the other burn units in fire are just not that good. We got Leona though. We're going to be testing out Leona soon. So if Leona is actually secretly OP, then maybe I'll bump up a little to S tier. Uh, Cause then we got some burn synergy going on. But for now, she's going to be A tier. For Sinza, I'm going to be putting Sinza in A tier. I did consider him a B tier at first, but the more I think about it, he does belong in A tier. He does pretty good damage with his abilities, and on top of that, he's a decent support as well, lowering the defense of your opponent. That's the same as increasing your entire team's attack, so you can think of them as a sort of attack buffer for your team. And uh, because how damage gets calculated in the game, uh, lowering your opponent's defense is going to be really, really valuable. So A tier hero, a DPS slash support unit. Onto Jonah, I'm gonna put Jonah in A tier, but I do think she is the worst character here in the A tier list. And the reason why she's in A tier for me is that I just don't think she belongs here in B tier. I think she's a lot better than the rest of the units here, and that's why I'm gonna put her in A tier instead. Uh, as a DPS hero, she is actually insane. She's super versatile. She's both a sniper with her chain combo being a sniper ability, but with her active skill up, she kind of becomes a detonator because she can splash on her basic attacks. So she does so much damage with her basic attacks on medium and large size bosses. She's also got some utility with her kit. Uh, she lowers the tile count triggering cost of your chain combos while her uh, active skill is up which means if you don't have that many converters on your team like on my team uh, you can just do a two tile red run and everyone on my team does their chain combos because she lowers the cost so pretty good hero in general and like i said she's probably the worst hero here in a but i still do i still do think she belongs in a tier on to IC, you guys already know this, I'm super biased when it comes to the two turn cooldown uh, preemptive converters. Those are my favorite kinds of converters personally, so this is going to be an S tier for me. And then last one is Frostfire. Probably nobody has Frostfire right now, I would assume, but uh, she's probably going to be S tier because she's a legendary hero. And that is going to be it for my fire tier list. Uh, like always, these are my personal opinions. Some of these characters I haven't tested out, some of them uh, I'm just putting on the tier list after reading their kit, so I could be wrong on some of them. But uh, if you guys have a different opinion, do let me know in the comments below, because I do change this out uh, when someone either convinces me uh, from the comments that you know someone should be higher or lower, or when I test a character out, uh, I sometimes move things around because uh, I come to realize that a character is either better or worse than I thought they were. But either way, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.